Hello and welcome to the debut episode in the Tron Academy series. This series is about all things engineering. There will be video tutorials on programming, mechatronic design, academic content, and even mini documentaries on interesting things. Now I promised an Android video tutorial a few weeks back with my Robocup compilation video. And now since it's been such a long time, I'm going to reward your patience by uploading two Tron Academy videos. The first one will be a video tutorial on setting up Eclipse with Android SDK. And the second will be about installing Android NDK with OpenCV. Now, I'm actually in the process of reinstalling my computer, so when I'm making these, I'm actually installing them, I'm not just simulating the process. So expect me to run into a few issues every now and then, and then I would just go and fix them, which is quite realistic, because this is what you expect from installing developer tools. Now I'm assuming you already have Eclipse, and you use it for other stuff, but now you want to add the ability to develop Android apps. So what you need to do is go to the Android developer website, and download the SDK for existing IDE. The ADT bundle will package Eclipse with the plugins already installed. You don't want that at the moment, because I think this is more flexible. So you download the package and you double click on the package where you download it and install it. What this basically does is unzip a whole bunch of files to the destination that you want. Um, in this case, I created a folder in C called dev, because I think that's tidier than sticking it under program files. But um, it's, it's, it's the same essentially. You'll see why it's, it's uh, I think it's tidier later on. So I click next. I don't think I need to start that up right now. Yeah, don't need to. So, yeah, click finish and start Eclipse in administ administrator, uh, administrator mode. Make sure you do that because if you want to install a plugin, which is what you're going to do now, you need to start it in administrator mode. Um, for Workspace, I'm just going to create one called Android because that's what I mainly use Eclipse for. And there we go. This is Eclipse. Uh, go help install new software, and add, add a repository that will allow you to install the ADT plugin. Now the ADT plugin is, adds a whole bunch of interface to a, interface additions to Eclipse that will allow you to develop apps essentially, but you have to realize that it's, it doesn't contain, the plugin doesn't contain the files that will allow you to start developing apps. Those files are actually contained in the zip file that you downloaded before. So what you do is you install the plugin anyways. Did you read the license? Make sure you read the license. And, oh, no, no big deal. Just click OK. Yep, restart Eclipse. And there we go. Oh, okay. Like I said, you need the the uh, plugin doesn't have the files by itself that allows you to start developing. You need to tell the plugin where you've unzipped those files. So in another case, I put it in C dev. If I can point to it, and there we go. Select the folder, click apply, and that will start the thing. And oh dear, ah no. I should have started the SDK manager when I um, installed the SDK manager, but I can do it now. It's not really a biggie. Um, set it up. Come on. Oh, it's already done there. I just gotta open it. There we go. Click tools. That's that's basically the essentials to install, and also select an API. Uh, I select the latest API because the latest version means all the functionality. Right? You might as well have more functionality than you need. Um, that's not strictly true, but in this case, I don't think you'll really notice if you're just using a few features. You'll find out why it's important later on. Um, grab a cup of tea when it's installing. I actually fast forwarded this video. And basically, we'll go, I'll go into preferences first and we'll see, look, now I've got the APIs installed. Now the Google APIs are important if you want to communicate to other devices from the phone using the USB cable. Um, that's important for what I'll do in future lessons. So let's just, you know, quickly get started, shall we? Let's create a new project. Um, cool, yeah, Android Application Project. Next, OpenCV Test is what I'm going to call my app because I'm just that's what I want to do with it. 
Um, for minimum required SDK, they say select the oldest one you want to support. I mean, who cares about gingerbread anyways? Just go straight to ice cream sandwich. And click next. Uh, yeah, click next. Now, this is this is quite fun to play with. Design an icon for your app. Activity, yeah, make, make, make the wizard create an activity for you. It saves a lot of work and typing if you let the wizard do some of the hard work for you because Java is so wordy. And there we go. This is the source file of your main activity. And what this basically does is draw the interface up. I'll, I'll come to more detail what that does later on. This is what your interface looks like. The wizard is kind enough to basically put hello world there. Um, and you're, you're basically ready to download the app to your phone. So what you got to do is open settings and go down to about phone and select build number. Click it seven times. Now what this does is unlock developer options on your phone if you haven't already. Now I've already done it, that's why it's complaining, but it should show on your ones properly. And then go into developer options and select USB debugging. Make sure that's ticked. And then after you do that, plug the phone into your computer and boom, instantly recognize it's connected. And that's when you can start downloading the app to your phone. Oh, that's not good. Um, what the hell's going on there? Check adb.exe. I'm um, just a handy tip here. Um, when you plug your phone into a computer and then on Windows it would go installing drivers and then eventually it would go driver properly installed and everything seems to be okay, that doesn't mean that ADB will actually recognize your phone. It's kind of silly because Windows automatically finds some sort of driver and that's just enough to download files from your computer to it, but it won't be enough to, you know, start debugging and programming with that driver. So make sure you go online and search for a driver that does support ADB. Um, usually the CD provided by the manufacturer does provide that kind of driver. I'm just going to restart Eclipse because I think that's one of the good easy fixes for this thing. Now, what I'm going to do now is check whether my device is actually connected. Now you can see that it obviously is connected. And restart Eclipse, run the Android app. And it should download to my phone. Yes, I select my phone. Yes, turn on Logcat. What that allows you to do is um, you, you put debug messages all over your program and you can send messages from the phone back to the computer so you can tell where your program's at. Very useful debugging. And congratulations, you've created your first app and downloaded it to your phone. Uh, make sure you subscribe and rate this video. Make sure you comment below what you'd like me to improve in my future video tutorials, because this is my first time doing a video tutorial. And uh, thank you very much.